around this special home video edition of sightings. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you seeing this thing zip back and forth? They're out there, and sightings are on the rise. Just like it was sliding through the sky, and it tilted like it was looking down at us. It was a bright light that dimmed down to a white speck. Ordinary people, astronauts, cosmonauts, even former presidents have all seen extraordinary craft doing extraordinary things. I happened to glance out one time and there against the black sky was a, was a white object at about a 45 degree angle. From the historic crash in Roswell, New Mexico, to unprecedented mass sightings going on right now in the skies over Mexico City, the evidence is mounting. We are not alone. My Uncle Ted was standing more over here, kind of leaned over like this, and we're talking to this creature. Are certain people being targeted for terrifying encounters with alien civilizations? Are rumors of bizarre cross-breeding experiments true? I remember being on a table with my head turned away, not wanting to look at this creature. Does the government know more than they're willing to tell us? Our government has flat out lied to us for 40 years or more. Terror, wonder, conspiracy, transformation, they're all part of the UFO experience. Hello, I'm Tim White. Are UFOs real? You'll find out in this special report from Sightings. In the vast expanse of space lie wonders unimaginable. Galaxies yet to be discovered, planets unnamed and unexplored, exploded stars teeming with the building blocks of life. Scientists are devising new technology to reach these outer worlds, but perhaps someone or something out there has beaten us to it. It was just a red flash of light. It, it sounded like a, well, a swishing sound, sort of et alors autour de cette forme il y avait des petites lucioles rouges. I saw this big triangular shaped three lights on each corner coming over my house. Mysterious lights in the sky. They were like stars. No sound. Uh, it just like it was sliding through the sky and it mm -hmm. tilted like it was looking down at us. It was a bright light that dimmed down to a white speck and went back to a red light down to a white speck and then just disappeared. You guys watching this inside? It's going out. Going straight out. Are these people sighting extraterrestrial spacecraft? Or is their imagination fueled by movies, books, and television simply misidentifying experimental aircraft? Holy cow! To answer these questions, we have to look back at the history of UFO sightings. Cave art in Australia and the western United States, painted at least 5,000 years ago by prehistoric civilizations, seems to resemble modern descriptions of creatures from outer space. Halfway around the world, a 13th century fresco inside a church in Yugoslavia includes a flying vehicle. It would be another 700 years before technology made flight possible. The modern age of UFOs began in 1947. Ex-military pilot Kenneth Arnold was flying his plane over the Cascade mountain range. He encountered several objects traveling at an extreme rate of speed. Although there are no photographs, Arnold had a drawing made of what he saw. His sighting triggered hundreds more that year across the United States. UFO mania reached a fever pitch in the summer of that year when the Army Air Force reported recovering a crashed saucer in New Mexico. The next day, the government claimed the disc was only the wreckage of a weather balloon. Sightings of unexplained phenomena weren't limited to just the United States. Marina Popovich, a Soviet pilot with over 100 air speed and endurance records to her credit, had her first UFO encounter in the mountains of southern Russia. My first contact with a UFO was a rather special experience. It was in the mountains and I saw a sharp ray coming out of a huge sparkling ball. Even some of the men and women who have been in space have reported seeing things they can't explain. Gemini and Apollo astronaut James McDivitt had his own encounter in June of 1966. While in orbit above the Earth, 
an unidentified object outside the window caught his attention. I happened to glance out one time and there against the black sky was a, was a white object. Uh, geometry of it was sort of like a, a beer can or a Coke can with a, with a pencil sticking out the, one of the round edges at about a 45 degree angle. What was it? McDivitt did snap a few pictures, but after turning the film over to NASA, the film mysteriously disappeared. Was it a clerical error or evidence of a government conspiracy to hide the truth about what's really out there? A 1990 Gallup poll showed that nearly 50% of Americans believe in the existence of UFOs. This despite the fact that most photographs and film footage of the actual sightings are not very good. The images are scratched, out of focus, or the camera's just too far away to see things clearly. But with the advent of the home video camera, more and more people have captured unexplained phenomena on tape. This home video was shot over Las Vegas in early 1991. It shows three objects floating and diving in front of the mountains. This is a spectacular maneuver. As you say, it goes in front of the mountains, so it has the mountain as a backdrop, which gives you a fairly good idea of its distance. July 2nd, 1947, Roswell, New Mexico, the time and place of the most significant event in UFO history. Something crashed on a remote sheep ranch and was confiscated by the military. But what crashed remains a mystery, fiercely debated for more than 50 years. Roswell, New Mexico. It's as quiet and peaceful today as it has been for decades. But on July 6th, 1947. That tranquility was shattered by a local newspaper headline. Air Force captures flying saucer on ranch in Roswell region. The story described wreckage of a flying disc found near a place called Corona, and it was based on a press release written by the public information officer at Roswell Air Base, Lieutenant Walter Hout. This building here, uh, building number 84, is a building, I believe, that they brought materials from the Corona crash and stored them in here temporarily. The chief intelligence officer at the base, Major Jesse Marcel Sr., was sent out to the ranch to collect the crash debris and transport it to the Army Air Force headquarters for examination. In the meantime, newspapers all over the western United States picked up the story. But before Marcel had landed his plane and strange cargo, the Air Force issued a second bulletin. By the time the B-29 with Jesse Marcel and some of the wreckage got to the headquarters, two hours after they left in Fort Worth, Texas. The fix was already in to kill the story. The second press release was far different from the first, saying the wreckage was actually from a weather balloon. Could the Army's top intelligence investigators have committed such a basic blunder, failing to recognize the mundane remains of a weather balloon when they first encountered it? No, says nuclear physicist and part-time UFO researcher Stanton Friedman, who's been investigating the Roswell crash for over a decade. He says that while Marcel was in the air, the Roswell base commander, Brigadier General Roger Rainey, got orders from Washington to cover up the incident. And what he did, inch for the wreckage of a weather balloon, the radar reflector on a weather balloon. And for a while, the saucer saga was forgotten, and might have remained so if Major Marcel hadn't rekindled the fire in 1980. Just before he died, Marcel admitted that the weather balloon story had been fabricated to hide the truth. He told Walter Hott there really was a saucer crash. He made statements to the effect that it was nothing of this world. It couldn't be bent, torn, cut, uh, pierced, <laughs> burned. Uh, he went through a whole list of them. He said, we just don't have the technology to produce material like I brought in from that ranch. Stanton Friedman contends that wreckage from an unidentified craft landed 200 miles away from the Roswell site. Friedman and other ufologists believe that this proves that there was not one but two crashes over New Mexico on July 2nd, the result of a spectacular mid-air collision. And at the second site, there were survivors. When I first came up to the, the craft, the creatures were laying like this in a line side by side and the live one was was over here. J. 
Gerald Anderson says he was five years old when he and his family came across the unearthly wreckage and bodies. My dad was kind of well, right about here. He was sitting like this. My Uncle Ted was standing more over here, kind of leaned over like this, and they were talking to this creature. Anderson's story matches that of others who were in the area at the time. With the help of hypnotherapy, he's been able to remember the encounter with startling detail. His description matches those from people who claim to have seen aliens. Four feet tall, grayish skin, large eyes, long skinny arms and fingers. Anderson recalls two aliens were dead, a third dying, and a fourth alien survivor seemed to be trying to communicate. Then just suddenly he turned and he looked at me. And when that happened, all kinds of things just started happening inside my head. I, I, I started getting sensations of tumbling and falling and an awful loneliness, like there was no way he could possibly get back to where he came from. Anderson says that within a matter of minutes, the military arrived, sealing off the area. The civilians at the site were threatened with bodily harm if they talked. Nevertheless, in the past 20 years, hundreds of witnesses have come forward, some daring to speak only on their deathbeds. Since Roswell ushered in the modern age of ufology, there have been more than 200,000 UFO sightings. Most are single craft witnessed by a single individual, making it virtually impossible for researchers to verify. But since 1991, ufologists have been documenting the largest mass sighting in history in the skies over Mexico City. The sightings began on July 11, 1991. On that day, there was a total eclipse of the sun. One of the best places in the world to view the eclipse was Mexico City. And for the first time, because of the home video revolution, thousands of people pointed their video cameras to the skies. Exactly at the time of the full solar eclipse, a disc-shaped craft appears over the city, hovers for over 30 minutes. 17 people on the ground recorded it on home video. And that's never happened before in the history of ufology. When modern scientists forecasted the date of the historic solar eclipse, they weren't alone. Some believe the ancient Mayas also predicted the exact date of the eclipse more than 3,000 years ago. This Maya calendar made another startling revelation. It predicted that on the day of the eclipse, a new age of enlightenment would begin. It's referred to as the prophecy of the sixth sun. The legend of the sixth sun, the new sun, signified by the great eclipse that just